I couldn't resist it. I caved and tried 3D printing to answer a couple of questions for all of us. Is it worth it? Does it make life better? And should you join me in trying this tech out? This is the Pamboo Labs A1, and we're gonna see what I can get printed in very little time. And I think it's probably gonna transform 3D printing for many people. It's 3D printing time. So I'm gonna press calibrate. It's failed, not a good sign. I was convinced I'd broken it before I'd even started, but then this happened. And I'll be honest, this is the face of someone who is beginning to start to see what all the fuss is about. Hi, it's Simon. Welcome back to Better Creating. Now look, for years, I thought 3D printing was just for engineering nerds with unlimited patience and questionable social lives. Sorry, no offense to the engineering nerds. You make the world go round. So I've got an A1 from Bamboo Labs and thank you to Bamboo Labs for sending it over. I should say actually, other than that, no money has changed hands here and I'm very much sharing my unfiltered thoughts on 3D printing and the Bamboo Labs printer. Now I spent the last month testing out the A1 and 3D printing in general to see if it's actually worth it for those normal humans. The spoiler, yes, if you know why, and it's really not as complicated as you thought. Now I went from total beginner to printing stuff that people actually asked me about. Wild, right? Okay, this is the Bamboo Labs A1 at around $400 for the combo and just under $300 for the basic one spool model. It's not exactly an impulse buy territory item, but compared to other printers and my expectations, it's kind of brilliant value and probably the sweet spot between budget and actually works reliably. Now, what makes this different from the printers that made that guy your mate knew throw his printer out the window is that this seems to be designed for humans without an engineering degree. It has an auto bed leveling system and out of the box auto calibration, which means I don't need to do sacred geometry rituals every time I want to print something. It has a camera so I can watch my prints happen and fail in real time from the comfort of my phone. And you can print pretty quickly, but you do have to build it first. And setting it up was pretty painless. In fact, surprisingly painless for how complex this new tech is. The box to printing time was about 45 minutes, plus some more time where I paused to move my camera while I did it, which compared to when 3D printing started for consumers like us, it's basically teleportation. Now the app walks you through calibration and unlike other tech quick setup guides, this one didn't make me want to throw my phone across the room. I actually found it really quite smooth. There's just a lot of screws to be put in, but look, if you're gonna 3D print, you're probably gonna wanna tinker a bit. Now, one thing they don't tell you though, is you need about three square feet of space that's relatively stable. So that wobbly Ikea table, probably not ideal unless you want your print to look like they were made during an earthquake. And well, with all the boxes of filament that got delivered with the printer, I needed somewhere to put it. So I went to Ikea and grabbed a dedicated unit to hold everything. They just released these new light gray designs, which I think look great with the printer. They've also got a kind of A1 mini if you want to condense everything down. You just can't print as big an item. Now for most people, I think there are two types of filament to go for. The PLA Basic, it's cheap, good quality, and doesn't need to be in an enclosure when you print it. Or get PETG for when you want some stronger plastic for say, things that hold weight, like I don't know, curtain hooks. Now, the Bamboo Labs A1 is known for being about as plug and play as it comes, and it should just auto calibrate. So I turned it on, pressed start, and yeah, I think I broke it. Not the greatest start, but well, it turns out the printer is not the issue. It's the user. So there are these solid plastic braces that turned out to be packaging. They're screwed into the printer to hold it for transport and it just looked like part of the printer. So after a couple of hours of stressing about it, I just took them off. Crisis averted and things get better from here. Time to start printing. Roll the sexy VT. Now what I love about the Bamboo Labs A1 is the Bamboo Handy app. You download it, use it to set the printer up, and then you can immediately find prints, select your printer model, and you basically click go and it prints it. You can even do it from your phone in the street, which I did when my friend asked me to print a little dinosaur head for his son. You do of course have to have left the printer plugged in and you can't just have printed something, it needs to be clean and ready to go. It's great, and it's that Bamboo Handy app, which is where I suggest starting printing. 
The easiest way to start printing by far is other people's designs or one that comes loaded on the printer. And it turns out there is an entire universe of free stuff online. It's a bit like BitTorrent for physical objects, if you remember that, except it's legal. Now, Maker World is Bamboo Lab's own platform for this, and it's beautifully organized. Lots of filters, and yes, I do feel inadequate browsing through it. Printable.com and Thingiverse are also really well known gold mines of optional prints, but with slightly more chaotic energy. But I really like the Bamboo Labs Maker World because you know that it will have a version directly for your printer. Now get subscribed if you aren't because given the fact that I make videos on well-designed tech and productivity tools, I'm clearly gonna have to do a video soon on printable desk setup items that you should check out. Right, so let's dive into the printing process. So project number one was actually accessories for the printer. Now, first up for me, this was a scraper. This is essentially for removing prints without destroying your build plate or your fingers. Commercial ones are like probably $15, which seems ridiculous for a piece of plastic with a handle. So printing my own cost about, I don't know, 50 cents. The materials it took was just nothing and it was about 20 minutes. It worked really well. Plus there's something deeply satisfying about using a 3D printer to create tools for itself. It's like the printer is slowly becoming self-sufficient. Not worrying at all, is it? And once you find something you like, you also have the option to load it into Bamboo Studio, which is the desktop app. And it's accessible and allows you to adjust settings, select filament, and do things like rescale models from third parties. I was a little bit nervous to go too deep too early, but it's clearly a great system once I learn how to do it better. And it lets you adjust settings like quality and infill particularly. So that's a fancy way of saying, how solid do you want this to be? How long do you want it to take to print? And how much filament do you want to use? Now, my first really exciting print in this process was this poop bucket. Yeah, it's custom designed for the A1 and it catches all the bits of excess plastic, which the printer kind of poops out when warming up and calibrating before a new print or a section of filament. And I've got to say, the dopamine here of creating a physical object from nothing is like really addictive. So after these more basic tests, I moved on to some more complex stuff and some more accessories for the printer itself, which feels like, again, a kind of meta inception moment. Now, how about this? It's a time-lapse shutter remote for a camera. So I wanted to capture those sweet, sweet time lapses you see everywhere from your prints where they kind of grow in front of you, but it's actually really hard to do because if you just use your normal camera, you see the printer head flying around and it really doesn't look very good. So I got this bracket on Maker World and printed it and you can actually attach a specific iPhone camera remote to it and then select time-lapse as a feature on the printer and that will make the printer head return to the print button each time, click it, and take a photograph, meaning you get a full, beautiful time lapse without the printer moving around, a smooth set of images, and then you can stitch them together with a little bit of research in something like Final Cut Pro. How cool is that? I haven't quite got the settings right on it yet, but the maker of it even shared little tweaks that you can make to the printer in the software to improve it. But the real game changer in this unassuming contraption has got to be the combo element of the A1, the AMS system. Now that lets you load multiple colors without having to hover over the printer like a helicopter parent. It means you can also print in multicolor. And you can see here from the logo I printed into the time-lapse print device, it looks really good. Now loading the spool onto this is pretty simple. You just push it on and then add the filament to the tube and it automatically processes it into the system. The printer will also automatically calibrate. So it means you can just leave four different colors on there and print as you wish. So project two is I wanted to move on to printing some things for my home and studio. First up, a VES mount for my iPad. I wanted to use my iPad as a secondary monitor for this filming setup I use here and didn't really have a good way of mounting it. And commercial mounts are either expensive or don't really come in VESA mode. So I printed this one and it's kind of great. Now next I printed this little minimal coat hook and I love that they've, they've printed it in two parts so you can hide the screw. Looks fantastic. And finally, one of my favorite things I've discovered about the 3D printing world is that you can access some really great design at a very low cost. And there's loads of amazing independent product designers that are getting much more serious with their 3D printing. 
Now, this iPhone dock was inspired by Dieter Rams's minimalist approach, and it was made by Scott Yu Yang, fantastic YouTuber. I followed him for ages. Check out his videos. He's the 3D print king, I think. Now, Scott's design is really thought through, and the final result is clean, functional, and it holds my phone at the perfect angle. He's even put in this little button where you can get your phone back out, and it takes the MagSafe chargers, and it's shaped perfectly so that when you drop your AirPods onto it, they slide onto the magnet. Really cool. So it's really cool that other users on Maker World have also tweaked the design of the original as new phones or other phone cases have come out. So with a little bit of careful measuring and researching, I found the perfect fit for my iPhone 16 Pro in a moft case which didn't exist online. Now, what makes this really special, I think, is just that it works. It's that I was able to match the exact aesthetic I wanted, no compromise or setting for close enough for mass produced options. Thank you, Scott. Once you've printed enough of other people's brilliance, you'll probably want to have a go at designing your own stuff. I started with Tinkercad because my brain operates at approximately a fifth grade level when it comes to 3D modeling. And well, this is designed for kids and adults and adults. Tinkercad is really great. It's free, it's browser based, and it uses basic shapes that you can then combine and cut away from. Think of it kind of as like digital Play-Doh, but with better precision. The learning curve is gentler than a nursery slope. I started with something super simple and I just made a little logo for my door. Maybe I'll stick it on the front door actually. So I am no Scott Yu Yang, but that's fine because look, this is a hobby, not a career choice. And wow, it's so much fun. Now, if you wanna see how far this kind of design can go on a kind of more beginner level, my friend Amy has become really brilliant really quickly and she prints all sorts of ideas and combines it with paint to make beautiful pieces of art. Let me know what you think. I personally love her notion earrings. Now, if you want to get fancier, programs like Fusion 360 or Blender will let you create more complex designs, but be warned, the learning curve jumps to black diamond level fast, so I've just stayed here. Once you've designed something, you export it as an STL file, and then it's back to the Bamboo Studio where you can set it all up and bring it to life. So after a month of printing everything from practical solutions to decorative objects, is 3D printing worth it? Here's my take. If you're looking for a creative outlet, absolutely yes. There's something magical about imagining something and then holding it in your hand just hours later. It's like having a mini factory at your desk that runs on ideas. And if you need a problem solving tool, it kind of depends. For custom organization, specific fixes or prototyping, it's incredible. I think I'm gonna be printing a bunch of storage systems soon, or maybe a specialized bracket for my weird Ikea shelf. A great example is I printed these little keyboard holders for my Ikea pegboard. The Bamboo Labs A1 specifically makes the whole process much more accessible than printers from even a few years ago. The technology has finally reached that switch sweet spot where it works without requiring that degree. And that said, there's still a learning curve. You'll have some failed prints and a need to clean parts and problem solve errors on your printer like I did. And you'll likely spend hours designing something only to realize it's two millimeters too small. But when it worked, which is most of the time with modern printers, it's genuinely satisfying in a way that few other hobbies are. And that's kind of the point. If you wanna get into 3D printing, you're probably someone who wants to tinker. Now, if you found yourself saying, I wish I had something that could more than a few times, or you enjoy the process of creating physical objects, 3D printing could well be your favorite new hobby. It could even solve some of your productivity problems. Is it for you? What would you print first if you had a 3D printer? What do you use yours for? Drop your comments below, I'd love to hear from you. And either way, just remember that on this channel, I'm in the business of helping you lot make your life easier with great ideas and tech. So if you want to learn the secret to the perfect desk setup, watch this video next, or watch this one, because apparently YouTube thinks you'll like it too. And if you want to see what else I create, both digitally and physically, get subscribed and hit my face to do so. Turn on the bell, and I'll see you on the next one. Bye.